can't run. Oh, I can't run. I can't hide. Even darkness is a light. From the lowest place to the highest praise, you are worthy. Amazing love, how can it be? It's far too wonderful for me. There's only one thing left to say. You are worthy. Oh. Well, all summer long we have been marching through the Psalms, and if that's Psalm 139 and there's 150, then we're getting close, right? Well, uh, you'll hear a lot more about Psalm 139. Uh, in just a little while. Let's stand together and uh, I want to read from Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One reason that we come to, uh, to church and participate in worship is to proclaim the greatness of God, to be reminded, to not only remind uh, others and proclaim it to other people, but we're reminding ourselves of who God is and how great He is. And so uh, we want to uh, sing about that, we want to talk about that, we want to pray about that, all of those things as we gather in worship today. Let's, uh, let's pray as we uh, continue our worship uh, time. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We acknowledge your greatness. You are worthy. You are beyond compare. Lord, I pray in the, in the, the, the pause of these moments that you will help us to, uh, to breathe, to rest, to step out from uh, the, uh, the, the, the busy lives that, uh, that we've probably all been living. And we step into this time of worship I pray that you'll help us to sense and know your spirit moving and working and, and that in these, in these moments as we, as we turn our eyes to you that you would speak to us and challenge us and, and, uh, and, and grow us in our relationship with you. Lord, we love you and we, we worship you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing together. worship our king come let us bow at his feet he has done great things see what our savior has done and see how his love overcomes he has done great things he has done great things oh hero of heaven you conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm. And you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. Oh God, you do great things. Oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. You have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. 
Oh, hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, God, you do great Can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain. Amazing love. How can it be? And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain for me who him to death pursued amazing love how can it be that thou my God shouldst die for me Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? He left his Father's throne above, so free, so Himself of all but love and bled for Adam's helpless race. Tis mercy all immense and free for all oh my God it found out me. Tis mercy. The dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. My chains fell off. My heart. Condemnation now I dread Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach.
that he knows us and yet still loves us. He knows us and still loves us. May this be our prayer today. As I rise, as I rise, Strength of God, go before, lift me up. And as I wake, eyes of God, look upon, be my son. As I wait, as I wait, heart of God, satisfy and sustain. And as I hear voice of God, lead me on, be my God. As I go, hand of God, my defense by my side. As I rest, breath of God, fall upon, bring me peace, bring me peace. Christ be all around. 
Hold me above and below me, before and behind me, in every eye that sees me. Christ be all around me. may be seated let's pray together Lord God we believe with all of our hearts as you have promised that you are with us you are all around us that when we gather in your name you're right here in the midst of us Lord I pray that we wouldn't miss you today and what you have for us we know if, if we do, it's, it's not that you didn't uh, uh, step in because you're always here and you're always speaking and you're, you're, you're there to, to help us to grow and to, to learn and to mature. But if, if, if we miss you today, we know it's because we haven't engaged. And so, Lord, I pray that you'll get rid of anything that may distract us or hinder what your spirit plans to do in our lives today. Lord, as we come today, we pray that you would uh, bring your, your forgiveness for the places where we need forgiven, that you'll bring your encouragement to the places where we feel discouraged, that you'll bring your healing to those who are in need of your healing. And, and Lord, we have uh, several who are uh, going through some, uh, some uh, difficult physical things right now, Lord, and we just pray that you would bring your healing and your touch. We thank you for the ways that you are already moving and working in those situations, and we give you the praise. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones recently and pray that you would bring your comfort to the, the grieving souls. Lord, I pray that you would be the, uh, the, the, the presence that we, that we so desperately need. Lord, we, we love you today and we thank you that, that you, have, uh, uh, you have a purpose for us, that, that you have desires to not only uh, bring your favor to our lives, but that as we, as we go into the, the lives that we live each and every day, that, that you desire to speak and, and move through us. Lord, I pray that you would bring people and situations across our path where we can recognize that, that, that you have orchestrated those things so that we can be your hands and feet and voice and uh, your, your uh, influence, your instrument in those situations, Lord. And I pray that, that you will help us to have eyes to see those opportunities and courage to step in and to represent you well. Lord, I pray that as we have gathered here in this place that you would bring your, uh, your continued spirit to speak to us, to show us, to encourage us, to, to do all the things that you desire. Lord, as we open your word in just a moment, we pray that, that uh, it would truly speak directly to the heart of the issue and we can sense and know that, uh, that you are speaking to us and that, that we, will, we will be uh, obedient to what you have for us today. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it is uh, great to be with you this morning. Kids, I think it is time for uh, Hope Squadron, so feel free to head on out and take off to Hope Squadron today as they are heading out. As they are heading out, let me uh, let you know about a few things. First of all, uh, it is great to have Tom LaFaire with us today. Hi, Tom. Tom had a... Uh, uh, a little bit of a health scare a couple of weeks ago and uh, is, uh, is on the mend and with us. He's in his, his preferred seat right there in the back row now. So uh, we, uh, we are, Tom, it is great to, to see you. Also, Tim, give a wave to Tim Dentler. Tim, uh, I was just uh, hanging out with Tim up at the clinic on Friday afternoon. Um, Tim had a procedure uh, on, his, uh, on his heart this week and... Um, uh, on Friday, and they went in because uh, there was a, they had detected and seen a, a hole in his heart that was causing some problems before he steps into all this cancer stuff, right? And uh, so they were going to fix that, and they went in there, and um, 
Well, uh, there was no hole in Tim's heart. So uh, we, uh, we thank the Lord for that. Still got to do all the surgery stuff just to find that out, right? But uh, uh, so we, uh, uh, we, we thank the Lord for continuing to work in Tim's life. And, and as he walks into the next procedures, we want to continue to pray for, uh, for him and, and his family. Uh, we, uh, we also, I also hung out at Cleveland Clinic uh, on Friday with, uh, with Sean K. Wood. And Sean is uh, dealing with some other heart stuff and other, other things. And I believe this week we'll, uh, we'll step into some, uh, so actually get to uh, do some surgery to put in some stents around his heart where he's having some blockages. So please continue to to pray for Sean as uh, as he uh, deals with uh, with with those uh, issues and all the complicated. They keep finding more stuff and all the things. So please be praying for uh, for their family too. Uh, well, it is uh, just a few things to uh, to let you know about. Yeah, there's the picnic. Uh, it's not raining yet, right? So uh, we're planning on picnicking. Um, uh, you know, it, it's always, anyway, we're just going to plan on it. If it rains, we've got a whole building. We can still eat burgers inside, right? So uh, right after church today, I hope you're, uh, you're ready for a picnic. If you didn't bring stuff, stick around anyway. I'm sure we've got plenty, and uh, we'll have a good time together uh, after church today. Also want to, uh, to remind you, uh, let you know, uh, encourage you to be here next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday will be, it is a, a breath of fresh air. Pastor Pete will not be preaching next Sunday. I thought we'd have another round of applause. That's okay. That's, that makes me feel good. Uh, no, uh, uh, Pastor Abby will be uh, will be speaking. It'll be a, a bilingual service. Uh, now, I guess you, things with uh, with Sean and uh, if Zeta is not a, is not able to be here, um, this is just a lingual service, not a bilingual service, and we'll we'll have to deal with that. But uh, the plan is still on for us to uh, to uh, to have that. Our our uh, uh, worship team practiced this week, and they're learning some some uh, some songs. It's kind of fun and exciting, right? It's, it's good stuff. So uh, we, uh, uh, we will have, uh, it's, it's just a, a, a fun uh, uh, opportunity for us. Um, Pastor Abi from Mexico, who's, uh, who's been with us and, and will be for several more months. And so uh, I hope that you'll be here next Sunday morning for that. Um, and then, let's see, what's the next slide? All those, uh, yeah, we got a bunch of stuff coming. So if you want to join a group this fall, we have several opportunities for you. In addition to the, the Sunday morning groups that already exist, uh, we've got youth groups starting up right after uh, the, the Thursday after uh, Labor Day, as well as the morning ladies Bible study Thursday at 10, uh, right after, so that's the 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 first full week of September. Uh, then uh, there is a uh, discipleship group. Maybe you remember in the, in the spring we had a uh, discipleship group, uh, More Like Jesus. Several of you were a part of that. Uh, and if you didn't get to be a part of that, I would love to, uh, to, to, to have you with us doing that as we walk through the, the uh, just what it means to, uh, what it really means to uh, uh, love people, live to love people to life. How do we do that? What does that look like? How do we, how do we uh, make prayer and scripture and, and uh, all the, all the uh, disciplines a part of our uh, uh, normal routines of life as we're growing and maturing and, and walking with Christ? And, and uh, I mean, if you were in that before and you want to be again, I guess that's okay. Uh, but, uh, uh, but I'd love to grab folks into that that weren't able to be a part of it in the spring as well. Uh, so I'd love for you to do that. That is, uh, the dates are there, uh, middle of September, that'll start up, as well as uh, an evening ladies Bible study um, that, uh, that is up there for you as well, and that starts on the 15th. So uh, anyway, all that is, uh, is coming down the pipe, so make sure that you are uh, aware of those things and, and join in. Uh, a lot of stuff going on in the, uh, in the life of our church Last week, we, then I told you about this opportunity that we're uh, we're we're looking into starting uh, the connection team, uh, getting uh, get, using some technology to help uh, folks uh, connect with God through our church. I'm going to play this video again. Maybe you missed it, or maybe you need it again. Uh, it's it's something outside the box, a little bit different than what we might be accustomed to. Watch this, and then I'll I'll mention just a couple more things about it. Is a new kind of outreach platform designed to enable your church to reach your city in a new way. Our goal is to help you serve more people and see more lives changed each week. It all starts by meeting people where they are. There are people all over your city who are wrestling with big life questions. Some just need prayer, want to know more about Jesus, and others are struggling and need help. 
And the problem is that they're trying to find those answers online instead of turning to the church. And when they do, they're getting answers like this. That's where we come in. Glue connects you to the digital campaigns that our kingdom-minded partners are running. These ongoing campaigns are designed to reach people in their moment of need, especially those who don't normally go to church. We call them explorers. So instead of seeing an answer to their question like this, they'll encounter a message of hope. Then they'll have the opportunity to connect, and if they're interested, we'll deliver them directly to you. From there, you get to do what you do best, build relationships. To get started, join Glue and fill out your church's profile. Next, grab a cup of coffee and wait while we send real people right to your Explorer inbox. You can respond directly, assign them to a team member, and update their status after reaching out. We've also put together a library of resources and training materials, as well as a private Facebook community to equip your team to serve your new connections and engage them well. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Glue is full of outreach and communication tools that help you increase your impact right in your city and serve more new people each week. You won't need to hire more people and we'll do all the heavy lifting with campaigns, leaving the ministry work for you. It's like having a full-time outreach team on staff. Sign up today and join over a thousand churches nationwide supercharging their online outreach with Glue. Now I know they have trouble spelling. Don't hold that against them, all right? Glue is not, uh, yeah, but uh, that, that whole concept of connecting uh, people with, uh, with a church and with God through a local church, uh, using technology to do that. Several of you, uh, after last week, have uh, reached out and said, yeah, I think I want to find out some more about that. Um, and uh, if there are more, I would love to hear that. You just email me and, uh, and we will uh, get together soon to find out what that looks like and how we can, how we can uh, reach folks. Another thing that I, th I think we run into, we say, you know, our uh, mission of our church is we live to love people to life. And and uh, maybe you've loved all the people in your life. I don't know. Uh, some of you say, yeah, I don't know that I know, uh, or the people that I have reached out to have, you know, maybe resisted, or the other people are already, and so I, I need to know more people and need to get out there and do, this is one great way to do that as uh, folks reach out online. Uh, this, uh, this group then helps connect them with a local church in their area, and we would love to be one of those local churches. So if that interests you at all, uh, let me know. We can, uh, no commitment uh, up front at this point we'll just find out more about it and what the, what that entails and uh, you can uh, see if that's a step that you want to take to to be part of that that team as we uh, as we try to connect with folks so uh man i've uh talked too long but uh we uh we are uh, there's a lot of stuff going on as we as we step in. I hope that you're praying for our uh, uh, kids as they've stepped back into school, or some are stepping back into school this week. Um, also, teachers, um, uh, I hope that you're praying for them, that you're thinking about that. Uh, I. I told a couple of people this week, this is only the second year that, that we haven't, uh, it hasn't really affected our family. We're still, you know, going along, and I know that a lot of you are like that, it might be uh, possible for you to just kind of miss that, and yet uh, our, our kids and uh, um, youth, uh, high school, middle school kids, all students of all ages, they're stepping into uh, uh, to that environment. Uh, we want to pray that they can have a witness for uh, for Christ there, that uh, that they won't be influenced in the other direction. And we pray for our teachers as they carry so much more than uh, uh, than maybe they they I don't know. Am I allowed to say that maybe they should have to? But uh, they are carrying quite a load as they continue to to uh, to teach and to help these kids learn, and also uh, our Christian teachers to, uh, to to bring the light of Jesus wherever they go. So I hope that you're uh, you're you're thinking along those lines and praying along those lines. Well, it is, uh, man, just like I said, just a couple weeks left in our Psalms series. Let's, uh, let's watch this, and if you want to flip over to uh, Psalm 139, we'll be there in just a second.
In the early 1970s, when the 60s hippies started settling down and having children, they got pretty creative in naming their kids. One place where there seemed to be a larger population of these folks uh, was in Southern California. And people in the mountains around Santa Cruz, California, grew accustomed to their children playing with the little boy down the street named Time Warp. Or the little girl next door called Spring Fever. Names like Moonbeam and Earth and Love and Precious Promise were popping up all over. And, and they eventually ended up in public school. And that's when kindergarten teachers at a school in Santa Cruz met Little Fruit Stand. Every fall, according to tradition, parents bravely applied name tags to their children, kissed them goodbye, and sent them off to school on the bus. And so it was for little six-year-old fruit stand. The teachers thought the boy's name was odd, but they were used to that kind of thing by then, and they tried to make the best of it. Uh, would you like to play with blo lo the blocks, fruit stand, they offered. And later, fruit stand, how about a snack? And he accepted hesitantly, but he didn't respond. By the end of the day, his name didn't seem much more odd than any of the others that the teachers had seen come through their classes. And at dismissal time, the teachers led the children out to the buses. And they said, fruit stand, do you know which, one of, which bus is yours? And he didn't answer, but that wasn't strange because he hasn't, hadn't answered them all day. Lots of children are shy on the first day of school, but it didn't matter. The teachers had told the parents to write the names of their children's bus stops on the reverse side of their name tag. So the teacher simply bent down, turned over Fruit Stand's tag to see which bus stop was his, and that's when she read, printed neatly on the tag, Anthony. <laughs> a famous line from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet says, what's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. In essence, Juliet was saying that a name is just a name and it doesn't need to define you. I say, uh, tell that to little fruit stand, right? <laughs> but, but, but that also helps us start thinking about our identity, right? Who, who we are, how we identify ourselves. Your identity is a, is a pretty big deal. I'm assuming that every single one of you has some form of identification on your person or close by right now. Maybe you have your driver's license or maybe you have your social security card. You probably don't have your birth certificate with you today or, or your passport, but I don't know, maybe. Uh, you, you might have uh, credit or debit cards with your identity and your account information embedded in that stripe or in that chip, Right? Or, or maybe all of that personal information is accessible on your phone somewhere, right? Apple Wallet or, or uh, wh whatever apps you might use. Wherever you access them, all those documents share a, a little bit of your identity. They may include things like your name and your address and official numbers that are registered with the government that represent you. There's also information related to how you look, right? Your, your weight, at, well, close to your weight, whatever you told them your weight was, right? And, and your eye and your hair color and, and all those things. All of that is part of our identity, what makes us who we are. And of course, our, your identity is, is so much more than that, though, right? More than, than just your name and the color of your hair and a few numbers. Your identity includes how you view yourself. And how other people view you. It, it, it's what you like and don't like. What you're good at and bad at. It's your personality, your idiosyncrasies and quirks. How you talk, how you walk, what you do for work, what you do for fun, what you believe. Your identity is, is tied up in so many things. It's tied up in your relationships. You are a, a son or a daughter of someone. And those relationships have formed your identity. Maybe you're a, a sibling or a parent, or a spouse, or a cousin, or a friend, or all of those things. All of those relationships are part of your identity, and, and some shape you more than others. So this whole idea of identity is, uh, is a pretty complex thing. And yet, and it's, it's how God made you, right? It's, it's so complex, and, and there's so many aspects to it, and, and yet God made you, and God knows you, all of you, better than you know yourself. And we find out all of that and more in our next track on the summer mixtape, uh, Psalm 139. 
It's another one of those coffee mug psalms. You know, we, we've seen several of those where it's, it's these phrases that we're used to. We put them on the wall. We put them on the coffee mug. We put them on a t-shirt or a bumper sticker. It's these, wow, look at that. Yes, that's so many. Well, well Psalm 139 is, uh, there, there's a lot of great sayings to live by. We, uh, we're, when, when we read it in just a minute, uh, you'll probably recognize parts of it, whether you knew that those parts came from there or not. You might recognize all of it. I don't know. There are, there are some amazing truths contained in, in these verses, truths that if you believe them can change how you look at life and how you live your life and how you see yourself and how you see others and how you see God. This psalm can truly shape our identity. Psalm 139 is 24 verses long, and I didn't know this before this week, uh, but uh, Psalm, uh, Psalm 139 is actually, those 24 verses are split into uh, six or uh, four stanzas of six verses each. So uh, first six verses, next six verses, next six verses, next six verses. So it's, uh, it's kind of like uh, four verses, uh, like we might sing a song here, we go from one verse to the next. Uh, so it's, it's four different stanzas, and you'll see a little shift in, uh, in, at the beginning of each one of those. So in verse 7, and there's kind of a shift in, in, uh, in, in uh, the ideas uh, presented there, and, and it goes on like that. As with a lot of the psalms we've looked at, there are notes at the beginning that tell us uh, who wrote this and, and, and uh, kind of a little bit behind it. So we find out that it's, uh, it's one of these, a lot of them are like this, that, that uh, it's attributed to David. It's a song, and it was uh, written for the director of music. And so we know that it's, it's a song to be sung. It's got these, uh, these four different verses, six, uh, six uh, lines each. Uh, Psalm 139. All that as a background. Let's read it this morning. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens... You are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Uh, do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139 is a beautiful, poetic, inspirational work of art. And the first thing we notice, uh, the first thing that I notice that I want us to notice today is that it paints a vivid picture of God's identity, of who he is and what he's like. That's, that's a really important thing, to have a, a, a clear picture of who God is and what he's like. Uh, uh, because if we have a skewed understanding of God, then it throws everything off, right? Uh, William Temple, former Archbishop of Canterbury, said, If our concept of God is wrong, the more religious we get, the more dangerous we are to ourselves and others. We, we want to see clearly this picture of God. And Psalm 139 tells us at least three things about God. 
First of all, God is omniscient. There it is. You have to look at it to see if you how to spell it, right? Uh, it's, it's a $5 word for a Sunday morning. Omniscient. There we go. Use that in a sentence this week and let me know about it. Uh, omni means all, and the rest of that word means uh, to know. God is all-knowing. This is the big theological term for God knows everything. That first stanza, verses 1 through 6, is all about all the things that God knows about you. He's, he's searched us. He knows who we are. He knows what we're doing. He knows what we're saying. He knows what we're thinking. It, it might sound a little stalkerish. I, I'm just being honest, right? That God is kind of stalking us maybe. Because God, but because God has your best interest at heart, the fact that God knows you should bring comfort and peace. You need to know that God knows all about you. God is omniscient. The next thing we need to know about God that we see here is that God is omnipresent. There's another one. Use that in a sentence this week and let me know about it. You probably figured this one out already. Omni means all and present means present. So uh, there, therefore God is all present. He is everywhere. He is, he is uh, 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 present everywhere. We, we can't get away from God. Again, still sounds a little stalkerish, right? Uh, but uh, this, this whole second stanza here, se- 7 through 12, uh, uh, explains all of this about that there's no place we can go where God is not already there. Uh, there, there was a, a man, I, I heard a story of a man from years ago who was uh, on the street, um, kind of anti-God, anti-whatever, saw this uh, student, uh, middle school age, uh, walking home from church, from Sunday school, and uh, thought he'd, uh, he, he'd, he'd do a little uh, heckling, so to speak, and he said, I'll give you a dollar if, uh, if, if you can show me where God is. And the kid said, well, mister, I'll give you a dollar if you show me where God ain't. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. God is omniscient. He knows everything. God is omnipresent. He is everywhere. God is, one other thing we learn from this this psalm is that God is personal. God isn't just omni-everything so far out there that we can't relate to him. This psalm is also very clear that God is a personal God. He doesn't know, uh, he doesn't just know about us, humanity in general. He knows you personally. The, the, the third stanza there, verses 13 through 18, is all about how, how, how God has intricately created each of us even before we were born. David talks about how the, the, uh, this intimate process of, of knitting and, and weaving us together in the secret place in, in our mother's womb. It's, it's amazing to think that God is so personally involved in our lives. He knows you personally. His fingerprints are all over your life. Knowing God's identity, who he is and what he does, is, is vital to living our lives for him. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. God is personal. We catch all of that in great detail in these 24 verses in Psalm 139. But even as uh, the psalmist is telling us all about God and, and painting this, this great picture of who God is and, and his identity, Psalm 139 also paints quite a picture of our identity, who we are or who we should be as God's people. So one thing that you are, that, that we all are, is that you are created little girl was visiting her grandpa, and she crawled up in his lap, and she said, Grandpa, did God make you? And her father said, Oh, yes, my dear, God made me a long time ago. And the granddaughter then said, Well, Grandpa, did God make me? And he said, Oh, yes, you were, you were made just a little while ago. There was a brief pause, and then the granddaughter finally said, Grandpa, God's been doing better work lately, hasn't he? You, no matter how long ago it was, you were created. You're not an accident. You were created by God on purpose for a purpose. 
And that changes a lot, right? Uh, if you believe that you're just the result of a lot of happenstance and, and random processes, then there's not much meaning to life. You can live randomly because you're just this random thing that exists, and so you can do whatever you want. But, but that's not true. Psalm 139 is, is crystal clear. Every part of you was created, knit together, uh, woven by God himself. I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing to think the, the personal. We said God is personal, and, and he's so personal that he knit you, he stitched you together. I, I don't know if you've ever considered the, the wonderful complexity of, of who you are. I mean, we don't have time for a science lesson today, but, but I was just reflecting this week. Maybe it's because I've been at the hospital so much here lately, but, but I've been reflecting on our, on our physical bodies and, and the amazing complexity of it all. I, again, there's, there's so much. I, I don't know. Think about eyesight for a second. As an image comes in contact with our eyes, the entire uh, uh, optical system makes billions of calculations just a second before the image gets, uh, gets to the optic nerve. And once it reaches your brain, the cerebral cortex has, has more than a dozen separate vision centers where it processes that image. And we don't even, you know, uh, we don't even know that any of that is happening in the moment. I think about uh, the, the, the largest organ that we have, our skin, right? One square inch of your skin has about 625 sweat glands, 19 feet of blood vessels, and 19,000 sensory cells. Working in coordination with your brain, it maintains your body at a steady 98.6 degrees under all weather conditions. Now, you might go a little lower or higher. You've been taking your temperature like every five times a day with all this COVID stuff, right? You know, maybe you run a little lower or a little higher, but you're, you're, it, it maintains your temperature. Maybe, you know, it's, uh, the picnic is coming. Maybe we should talk about our stomachs for a minute. I don't know. Uh, your, your, your stomach has 35 million glands which secrete the right amounts of fluid to allow your body to digest food and convert it into stored energy for your muscles. To avoid digesting itself, your stomach produces a new lining every three to four days. Your heart, your heart beats over 103,000 times a day, pumping your blood vessels a distance of 168 million miles. Your lungs... Automatically breathe in 438 cubic feet of oxygen each day. We could go on and on, right? I, and and uh, there's so many things that we don't even understand, and certainly I don't even understand. Uh, it's not my specialty, but, but you and I, I think we get the point. We are wonderfully complex. That's just the physical part of life. Of course, we have emotions and intelligence and personality and, and spirituality. Uh, we read here. And I hope that you're grasping. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You have been stitched together by the God of the universe who knows you personally. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You were created by God. All of those complex details were, were formed, knit together to, to, by God to make you who you are. In Ephesians 2, uh, that we are described as God's uh, poema is the Greek word. It's the Greek word for poem, or it's also used for uh, a work of art. Many times it's translated in, in, uh, in, in English as masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece, a work of art created uniquely and personally by God. You have to know that you are created. It matters. It matters. You are also known. God is all-knowing, and he knows you. That word searched in verse 1 means to investigate. Or maybe we'd say we take a deep dive. Maybe you, you, something interests you and you go on the internet or whatever, dangerous thing to do, but you go on and you take a deep dive into this or that and you follow this. Uh, God has taken a deep dive investigating you, not, not to catch you doing something wrong, but simply to know you. Being known is one of the fundamental needs of our lives. We, we are made for relationship. When we don't have close relationships, we feel uh, that, that, that no one really knows or cares, and it leads to depression and homelessness. More than once in the last few years, I've, I've heard wise people say that, that we are facing an epidemic of loneliness, and that's only been deepened through the pandemic. 
If, if that's you today, please hear the truths that spring to us from Psalm 139. God knows you. He knows where you're going and he knows what you're doing. He hears you. He knows your intimate thoughts. He cares about you. You are known by God. And maybe this is a good place to say that as the church, God's representatives in the world, one fundamental mission that we have is to build relationships with people so they can know that God knows them. We are his representatives. Many times people feel God's, uh, God's presence and God's love through the relationships that we have with them as we represent him to them. We live to love people to life. If we're living in relationship with God, we can't just keep that to ourselves, but we've got to reach out and know others so they can know him and so they can know that he knows them too. You have been created personally by God and he's searched you. He, he's interested in you. He, he knows you intimately. You are created, you are known, and you are not alone. God is with you wherever you go. That second stanza there in in verses 7 through 12 in this psalm uh, describes in detail all of the places that we might try to get away from God or or places life might take us where we're tempted to think that God might not be there. But but David, in writing this psalm, uh, gives an assurance to the believers who have sung this song for generations. Just two or three thousand years, people have been singing this song, and it's just as true today as it was when David penned this and gave it to the director of music, uh, that that, that there is no place in the universe uh, or beyond it where God is not already there. You cannot get away from God's presence. And it's not just that that, that God is there, but verse verse 10 says that he is with us uh, and and guiding us and strengthening us as he's there. He's with you and he has plans for you. You're not alone. So there's there's some truths that we learn from this beautiful work of art, this psalm, Psalm 139, uh, one that, uh, that gets quoted an awful lot. Uh, we, we see that. Uh, we, uh, there, there's some great truths telling us about God's identity and about our identity. And, and maybe we could stop right there and, and call it a great morning because we learned a lot and the burgers are going to be on soon and, and it's time to, time to head out. But, but stick with me here because these truths are not just meant to be learned. They're meant to be lived. We can learn an awful lot or know in our head an awful lot about God, about the Bible, uh, about how these things work. But if we're not living like it, we've missed the whole point. If, I guess this is the question that, that, that this kind of boils down to in my mind. If God is omniscient and omnipresent and personal, and if I am created, known, and not alone, then how, does that, how should I live my life? Does, does knowing those truths affect what I do with this life that I've been given? I'm not sure that we always take that next step. Uh, we, we give a nod to the truths of the Bible. We even say that we believe them. But, but those truths aren't, aren't always evident in the decisions that we make day to day. I don't know, maybe it's that we forget about it or, or maybe that we, uh, we get distracted by other things or we just get mired down in, in living life and the habits that we go through or, or maybe it's that we don't really believe these things even if we, we uh, give a nod to them in Scripture. But, but I'm not sure that we always live like, like these truths we've talked about today are fundamentally true. I think maybe that was the case for these, the, 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 the church, the people of God, even back when David was writing this. Because he includes two verses at the end that, that help us take that step. To move it from learning stuff to living stuff. Verses 23 and 24 guide us in a simple prayer that you can pray literally every day. That you should pray literally every day. That can help keep you from living in a way that... Uh, uh, Help keep you living, uh, living these truths out. Psalm 139 verse 23 says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. It's kind of cool here that uh, we kind of wrap up where we started. Verse, verse 1 says, God, you have searched me. And then verse 23 invites him to keep on searching. 
right? Uh, to keep on knowing who you are so that, so that he can keep on growing you to be more like him. It means that, that, that we'll let him uh, into the deep places of our hearts, that, that we'll allow him access to our personal thoughts, that, that we'll even let him root out the sinful, offensive things that maybe we've been hanging on to. All so that we can follow him more closely. Now and forever. It go into the way everlasting, it says. I, I, I guess for me it comes down to this. If, if God is a God like we've talked about today. and That he knows me per, uh, personally and he's with me everywhere. Then we get to invite that God to keep on searching to keep on knowing, to keep on growing us so that he can keep on creating his character in us. I want his identity to be my identity. I want his character to be my character. I want everything that he finds offensive to be eradicated so that his character shows in my life. I hope that you want that too. Worship team's going to come and, and we're going to close with a, with a song all about God's pursuit of us. And as we sing about God's love and the way he seeks after us, it's a, it's a great time for you to let him do his work in you. Maybe it's been a long time since you've prayed a prayer like, search me, O God, and know my heart. Maybe it's kind of been like, God, I've got a busy day today, please bless me, and we're out the door. Or, yeah, God, I know I need to deal with that, but not right now, and we're out the door. These times, these moments are built for, for us to pray prayers like this. Will you stand with me and, and in just a moment uh, we're going to pray that prayer and then I would invite you to, uh, to let God do his work in you as we sing. We're going to sing about God's reckless love and the way that he pursues us and comes after us. Some of the same things we've talked about uh, throughout. Because it's not just that God is everywhere and he knows you, but he knows you and he loves you. Maybe even we could say he loves you anyway. Uh, he, a lot of times we keep people at a distance so they don't get to know us because we're afraid if they know us, they won't love us. God knows every part of us and loves us anyway. Will you bow with me? And I hope that you pray in your heart as I pray out loud. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Let's sing together. I spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so kind to me.
I was your foe, still your love fought for me. And you have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down and lie you won't tear down coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down and fights till I'm found. Leaves the night. Lord God, I thank you for the truths that we've seen in this psalm today. Lord, I pray that as we uh, walk out of this room today that we could know deep in our hearts that we have been created by a personal God, that we are known personally and intimately by you, and, and we are not alone because you are everywhere, even before we get there. Lord, I pray that that would impact our lives, that as we live our lives each day, that we can live out of that place of identity of who we are and who you are. I pray that you would bring your, uh, uh, your, your blessing upon us as we stick around and, and, and share some food together. I pray that we can have a, a great time getting to know each other and that we would uh, see the church at work even over the next little while as we, as we uh, build relationships and fellowship together. Lord, we, we pray for the week that stretches out before us and we know that you are already there. And so we walk into this week with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.